Hello friends, it's Shan here. Welcome or welcome back to Golf with Shan. We just pulled into the golf course facilities at Angus Glen. I almost said Glen Abbey. That was a previous video. Today we are at Angus Glen in Markham, Ontario. Looks beautiful. This whole area looks really beautiful. They have a few like new development areas coming up as well. Lots of nice houses around here. I've heard a lot of good things about this golf course. It's a beautiful day. It's like low 20s, starting to get a little bit cold into fall, but we still have a few more weeks of golf left in Canada for 2023. We're about to check in and then we'll head out to the golf course. There's a wedding and a tournament happening here. That's why it's so busy looking in the parking lot. Um, so the pro shop is inside and down the stairs. It's my first time here. A little more information for y'all. There are two courses here. There's a north course and a south course. Today we are playing north course. And I think the tournament is on the south course today. For two people on Sunday, we're teeing off at 1.10 p.m. it costs 350 Canadian dollars and that's all together including tax and cart and it looks like range balls are not included. <laughs> Welcome to Angus Glen Golf Club located in Markham, Ontario. I will be playing the North Course today with a total yardage of 6,160 yards. I'll be playing from the white tees as usual. The slope is 124 and from the back tees, the Canadian Open tees, the slope is 143. Not an easy golf course, but let's get into it. Hole number one is a par 5, 557 yards. This is a long dog leg left. I love when we have these cart things that calibrates. From here, you can see where the hole takes a turn to the left. The green is actually right next to the white barn in the distance. I pushed this shot to the right, which is okay, but I still had about 185 to 190 yards left. Starting off with a long and skinny par five. Also, didn't have time to warm up today, so my first few swings are just a little bit stiff. But it's all good. We're gonna warm up. This was a blind shot from 190 yards out, but this was probably one of the best five woods I've ever hit from the rough. Hole number two is a downhill par four, 409 yards, although playing a little bit less than that. It is a dog leg left and off the tee, you'll want to aim just right of the big tree sticking up. I pushed this shot and the shot tracer didn't really catch it because my body was in the way. Found my ball. It's just right here. I'm gonna pop it out to the fairway. All right, back on the fairway, you can see the elevation change on this hole with the green significantly lower than where you would be standing on the fairway. I actually underestimated how much you need to club down from this fairway and I hit a wedge from about 120 yards and it went too far. Hole number three is a short par four, 306 yards. This hole is a 90 degree dog leg left. I do not have driver in hand. I am hitting five wood and trying to go up the left side of the fairway. This shot, I just pushed a little bit left so I ended up in that bunker right in front of us. If you do wanna take driver, you will have to take this bunker line and cut straight across. Gotta be honest here, this is not what we wanna see. Is 
that pretty, pretty straight in. Hole number four, par three, 144 yards. This is the handicap 18 hole on this golf course, which means handicap wise, it's the easiest hole. Nothing much to it. You do have to get over all of this fescue hazard. One thing I will mention is the greens were rolling slower than I thought they would for a golf course of this level. It's not a big deal, it's just something I noticed. Hole number five is a reachable par five, 448 yards. From the white tees, it's pretty straightforward. If you're playing from a further back tee, this hole will play slightly like a dog leg right. I hit a really good drive here, but the fairway on this hole is actually pretty open, so you do have a little bit of space to work with. All right, so as you can see, I almost ran my second shot onto the green. I probably had enough distance. A lot of you watching this video will be able to reach this par five in two shots if you keep the first one on the fairway. Hole number six, straightforward, par four, 382 yards. Nothing much to it, you just wanna hit your driver straight ahead. While we're waiting, the fairways here are really narrow. Birdie time! I honestly haven't had a birdie in quite a few videos, so here we go! This is the first one of two for this video. Hole number seven, par four, 363 yards. This is a dogleg right, and you will have to cut the corner on the right side of the fairway if you want to hit driver. I actually took a risk here. I figured that would be a good shot, but I wasn't sure, and I ended up hitting the perfect line. So look out for my shot tracer. This is the direction you want to go if you have a similar driving distance to me. You know when you surprise yourself and hit the perfect drive and then you mess up a 100 yard wedge shot and you can't get it on the green? Yeah, here it is, relatable content. Hole number eight, par three, 161 yards. There is an elevation change here. The green is below the tee deck level. I would only club down one club. So I actually took a seven iron here, which is like one and a half clubs down, and I didn't hit the perfect shot, but I definitely left it short of the green. Hole number nine is a short par four, 302 yards. This is a handicap four hole. It's deceptively simple. The fairway up ahead is really narrow and zigzaggy. Bunkers on the right end at about 220 yards. Bunkers on the left start at about 240 yards-ish. So if you are gonna take driver, you are bringing all the bunkers into play. I miscalculated this. I thought I had enough distance, so I actually hit a really good shot, but aim left of this bunker, everyone. <laughs>
On to the back nine. Be careful of the pot bunkers on this hole especially. Slightly uphill, par four, 366 yards. This is the handicap one hole on this golf course. Also, the back nine is definitely more beautiful, more scenic. I also have my camera on the auto setting just so that it doesn't take up any time, but the clouds were kind of throwing the exposure setting on my camera through a loop. So some of these shots will look a little bit darker and underexposed, and then another shot it'll be perfectly crisp and clear. Here is the view from the blue tees. The white tees are up there. All right, hole number 11 has to be the signature postcard hole. I mean, look at it. It is beautiful. It looks scary as F. <laughs> All left side is water. Off the tee, you can just go for the wider part of the skinny fairway up ahead. One thing I will note is this fairway slopes towards the water. So as you can see, I actually hit a really good drive here to the middle of the fairway. And then the ball ended actually on the left side here, right next to the rough. Now you can play it smart here and hit three shots into the green or I tried guys I tried <laughs> I was trying to hit a draw there and I think I had enough distance it just it just didn't draw so I'm straight just right of the green All right, so right here, there was like barely any grass. It was just hard dirt. It's where you walk down from the cart path. So I was having some issues here and I hit the shot too far. Disappointing bogey here, that chip really got to my head, but it's all good. Hole number 12, par 4, 355 yards. The water hazard on the left side continues up this hole. Again, the fairway is very narrow, so you will want to try to hit a straight shot down the middle of the fairway. Just stay dry here in the rough. I'm not kidding, these fairways are really narrow. You can kind of see in this shot. And also there's just a giant pack of geese up ahead. It's golfing in Canada. Hole number 13, par 4, 349 yards, dog leg left. Now you see what I mean when I said the back nine is a lot more scenic, a lot more water hazards. I personally really enjoy the back nine. All right, so I actually hit a really good drive here. I was going for left of the metal pole right in front of us, the left edge of the bunker in front. That is about where the 100 yard marker is. Thumbnail moment, the back nine holes are truly beautiful.
Hole number 14, short par three, 115 yards. Over hazard, that's it. It's a par three. Hole number 15 is our final par five, 500 yards. This is actually a double fairway hole. So off the tee, you do wanna go for just that single bunker in the distance. Stay away from the water hazard on the left. And as you can see, I actually hit a fade here right of where I wanted to go, but I am safe on the fat part of the fairway. All right, so past the water hazard, you can see the fairway, there is a top deck and a lower deck. I didn't have enough distance to go for it, so I just took an iron and decided to lay up at about the 100 yard marker, just so that I can hit one more full swing shot into the green. It's really up to you if you wanna to go to the upper deck fairway or stay down here. If you do stay down here, just know you will have a slight elevation change. So make sure you have enough distance when you're hitting onto the green. What's that? Another birdie, two birdies in one round. Always feels good. Hole number 16, at par four, 405 yards. This hole is a slight dog leg left. And yes, there are those two bunkers just to be annoying. Hole number 17, par three, 167 yards. They actually moved the tee decks back one tee deck. So this is actually the blue tee deck playing 182 yards and I have five wood in hand. Now we do see a lot of fescue in front of us and a few bunkers on either side, but there is a good distance of fairway if you don't have enough distance to reach the green. Final hole number 18 is a par four, 385 yards. This first shot just went straight out of bounds on the right side, so I reloaded. You can see from this footage, the fairway actually slopes towards the right side. So I would ideally aim up the middle or left side and the ball will likely bounce to the right a little bit. Dead center. So these golf carts actually tell you how far you are from the tee deck. So it basically tells you how far you drove the ball. And today I've been hitting the drives 230 to 240 total distance, which is very good. And I'm really happy about that. It's a little bit further than I usually do. I think I usually get like a 210 carry and then it doesn't run out as much. I really think I'm just getting more like forward spin on the ball and it's rolling out further. Here we are on the fairway. I promise this footage is actually straight. This is how sloped the fairway is to the right.
That's a wrap on Angus Glen Golf Club. Before we get into it, I want to know what did you think of this golf course based on what you saw in this video or if you've played this golf course before, what are your honest thoughts about it? This golf course is also a Canadian Open hosted golf course multiple times. It's in excellent condition. The back tees are quite challenging. Sorry, the sun is like in my face. Um, the back tees are quite challenging. We played from the white tees, which were just over 6,000 yards. I think the yardage for the holes were actually pretty good from the white tees. It was a challenging golf course, but it wasn't frustratingly challenging, if that makes sense. After the first few holes, the first few holes were kind of like a typical golf course, just nicer condition. And then you get to the holes with the water hazards and it just is gorgeous. There's something about water on golf courses that just hits the soul for me. I love it. Overall, I thought this golf course was really nice. On the pricier side, for sure, for public golf courses, but given its facilities, its fame, the fact that it's hosted a lot of the world's top golfers for Canadian Opens and other championships, um, this golf course does host a lot of weddings and tournaments. We had a wedding and a tournament today happening. So yeah, it's a well-known course. It's in excellent condition. The greens were rolling slower than I expected them to. There was a lot of like ball markers and stuff. That could just be from people trampling over the green all day. <laughs> and then the one other thing I would say is the bunkers were a bit dry. Some had a few little pebbles in it. Wasn't a big deal, but I did expect the bunkers to be just a little bit nicer. But aside from that, it's a beautiful golf course. Everything else was in great condition. Perfect weather today. We got paired up with two other people who were really fun to play with. All right, the sun is like right in front of me here. Thank you so much for watching today's video. If you enjoyed it, as always, make sure to hit that thumbs up button for me. It really helps out the channel. Comment down below if you've played this golf course before. Let me know what your thoughts are. If you haven't subscribed to my channel yet, make sure to hit that subscribe button as I will be posting a lot more golf videos and travel coming up soon because it's getting cold here. All right, I'll see you in my next video. Bye!